Hi, this is Jenna. And this is Kelly. And you're listening to ODFM. This episode is one dissertation from murder. Are we now ready? We're using the big words. Big words. <laughs> we have so many D words to use up. I think we'll we'll be able to have like thirty seasons. I, I yeah. All right. My mom actually sent me this story, so she was like, "Ooh." She hasn't listened to the out. podcast. No, my dad did, but my but mom is supportive. How did how did he describe it? How He's, did he describe our language? What did he say? It it enhanced. It enhancing. Yes, it enhanced the podcast. We, we do like to enhance the stories yes. with our colorful vocabulary. <laughs> this was a cold case from the eighties. I love that. I know. But it recently. All right, Bill. Cur- Where's Bill Curtis? Oh, come on, Bill, Bill Curtis. This cold case from the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't sound right. as good. All right. <laughs> Well, the cool thing, it just recently came up with new developments. I know. So I thought it would be a fun one to discuss. And then we can revisit the story after the court system is done with it. Ooh, and there's the final conclusion. It. Yes. Let me see, set the scene for you. Dark haired and handsome, Jim Krausnick was the son of a well-known family in Mount Clemens, Michigan. Ooh. Can you see him now? Handsome, tall. Handsome. So Dark haired. I'm going to need a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll turn off the camera. Just kidding. <laughs> <All right. laughs> His summer job was working as a caddy and a lifeguard at the local country club. So he's kind of shishi. He's kind of shishi. He's, he's kind of shishi. <laughs> he's fancy. He was considered shy, nice, and athletic. And living in the same town was Kathy Schlosser. Ooh, Schlosser. Ooh. Yeah. Schloss, Schlosser? Schloss, that's hard to say. Schlosser. Kathy. Kathy. A girl who grew up in a working class family with blonde hair and a bubbly personality who was well liked and a member of homecoming court. Ooh. So high schoolers. Jim and Kathy attended the same high school where Jim was just a year older than Kathy. But it wasn't until the two went to college at Western Michigan University that they began dating. In 1974, holla, birth year. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the birth year. <laughs> 1970s for like, don't claim me. Right. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm not claiming your ass, Kelly. Uh, so, okay. In 1974, the couple married in a church in Mount Clemens, the same church where only eight years later, Kathy's funeral would be held. Ooh. Yeah. Shikes. Yeah. Just a year after getting married, the couple moved to Fort Collins, Colorado. Oh, there it is. There I was is. like, this is not in Colorado. Yeah. There you go. How is okay. this related to Kelly? Yep. I brought it in. <laughs> brought it back. Plus, it, you know, the 1974 thing. Well, yeah, true. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At this time, Kathy had a bachelor's degree and Jim a master's. I know. They're getting, I don't know, smart and shit. Yeah. Good for that. <laughs> Something I'm apparently not doing. <laughs> They're getting uh Smart. Smart. <laughs> Not stupid. I got those degrees and things. <laughs> Jim began studying for his PhD at Colorado State University. Within four months of moving there, Kathy had a really devastating miscarriage. Oh. I know. But a few years later, and a day after her 26th birthday, she gave birth to Sarah, their only child. Rainbow baby. Rainbow baby. After finishing his doctoral dissertation... There's the word, dissertation. Mm -hmm. Jim landed a job teaching at Lynchburg College in Virginia. So they moved to Virginia. Okay. Lynchburg, students and staff knew him as Dr. Krausneck, even though no doctoral degree had yet been awarded to him. Oh, Oh, okay. Well, it turns out that his dissertation had been returned for revisions, but Jim had never resubmitted his work to get his full doctorate. Like, if you're doing all that work, wouldn't you? Oh, my God. All that money into school, all that work, just freaking rewrite it. That's, oh, oh my gosh, yeah. It was just edits. It's not like they said, this sucks. They just said back edits. Isn't that weird? Oh, my gosh. That really Um, blew my mind. That's like people who, like, like go to school and then, like, 
they they are like three credits short yeah. of a degree and they quit and it's and just they quit. like oh it's just so nuts suck it up and do just one more class do it it's not ah uh, the end of the world it drove me nuts thinking of that I was like oh my god all that time to get a doctorate and then you don't even finish it oh my god so maybe he's not so smart right you have to do a dissertation mm-hmm. to get a doctorate right and it's like a it's like a paper right yeah I, I think some of them are oral so. Oh, and okay. a lot of them might be oral, so like a presentation. But you do a revision. See, you just do it. Just do you it, know? Dude. I mean, mm-hmm. if he's been in college that long, he's he's done other reports and stuff. It's just yeah. one more. It's like, just one it's... more, dude. Just get it done. Wow. Anyway, Jim loved his job teaching at the college, but Kathy pushed him to find something a bit more lucrative. Mm. <laughs> Roll your eyes. Mm. Yeah. He tried for a pay increase at the college, but his request was denied as his salary was already in line with the school's guidelines for his degree and expertise. So they were like, yeah, dude, uh, that's yeah, not happening. Yeah, they kind of have a... Soon in 1981, Jim landed a great job as an economist with Eastman Kodak, who was oh. at its pinnacle at that point. They had employed about 60,000 people at this time. So with help from his parents, he and Kathy bought a house in the Rochester suburb of Brighton. So they moved again. Which, which state is that one? So I'm guessing Rochester, New York. Is it New York? Okay. I was just curious because they're kind of bouncing all over here. They are. They're all over the place. Kathy, meanwhile, enrolled her daughter, Sarah, in a nursery near their home and made some friends there. Okay. And one friend urged Kathy to enroll Sarah in a dance class. But even with all those activities, Kathy and Sarah were still a little isolated. Jim worked long hours and the couple shared the family vehicle. So while he was working, Kathy and Sarah had to stay at the house and didn't have a way to leave. Ooh, that sucks. Yeah. When that, didn't she, she also had a, didn't you say she had a master's? She had a degree. degree? Um, not a degree? master's, just a, ba- a bachelor's. Not, but Okay. She's, she's just. Yeah. She's hanging with the baby. Hanging at home. Okay. Taking care of the baby, which is a way harder job than any other job. Just going to say. Seriously. I right? wish it had pay. Yeah. Because the, the boss sucks. Oh, the boss totally sucks. The boss wants the boss or the 24-7. Kids. <laughs> yes, exactly. The boss is too much work. Basically a snack bitch. Like, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You are. And a butt wiper. And mm-hmm. yeah, you're a nurse. You're a. Have you ever seen that picture of Beyonce sitting there next to her kid opening up like a bag of something? And you're like, even when you're a, even when you're Beyonce, you're still someone's snack bitch. Or even when you're a diva. <laughs> That's right? hilarious. You're still your kid's yep. snack bitch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ugh. So Jim's better paying job was exactly what Kathy was hoping for, but trouble was brewing. Uh-oh. As it does often in, in our stories. <laughs> yeah, or we, we, wouldn't we don't have really stories. have good endings. No. <laughs> good ending. No, not really. At Kodak, executives were asking about Jim's PhD. Oh. Yeah, Jim kept promising to show them the paperwork to prove he had received his his doctorate, but he kept putting it off, giving them it to them since he really yeah, didn't have you know, it. I don't know that in any of my job interviews, anyone's ever like questioned my degree, no. but I would imagine that the higher up you go, mm-hmm. the the more important it is, and they might say something like, "Can you prove that you have this yeah. degree?" I mean, I wonder why they started questioning it. I don't know, right? Yeah. That's interesting. But the pressure kept mounting and he became distant and short-tempered with Kathy whenever he would return home from work. Why? She finished her degree. I know. She's just, <laughs> she did her part. She did her shit. What's right. your problem? <laughs> so the marriage became strained. Jim began sleeping in the den and Kathy began talking about leaving him and moving back to Michigan with Sarah. Mm. The evening of February 19th, 1982... Jim came home from work just before 5 p.m. He claimed he found the garage door and another nearby door open when he drove up. So that's kind of creepy. When entering the house, he saw glass on the floor from a window in the kitchen. Oh. Kathy's purse was on the dining room floor and the contents were scattered nearby. Uh Uh-oh. A plastic bag and a tea tray with a creamer and sugar bowl were also on the floor. Okay, so the creamer and sugar bowl were still upright, like they'd just been placed on the floor instead of tossed or knocked over. So that was... That's really odd. I know. So that's a detail to remember. That's like when you do like that magic trick where you pull the... The, <laughs> the, t- <laughs> um, the tablecloth, right? Tablecloth, and, that's you know, a good word. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to throw this, but look. <laughs> but look. They're both standing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe did that, they did like that bottle flip trick. That oh, water yes. Thing oh, that kids God. That was so fucking annoying. <laughs> I did that for like a full year and I'm like, stop it. Oh, my God. Every time we'd go to a restaurant and stuff. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that's over. Okay. So Jim hurried upstairs when he saw all that. When he got to the master bedroom, Kathy lay in a pool of blood on the couple's bed with an Ooh. axe embedded in her forehead. Whoa. Yeah. An axe. An axe. And still sitting there in her. Fo- wow. <sighs> Horrifying, right? I'm sorry, just, okay. This is, yeah. this is why I'm going to hell. When- <laughs> because it just came in my, well, she obviously had a splitting headache. I just, oh, oh. this is why I'm going to hell. Cause and, this is what comes yeah. into my head. Oh God. <laughs> it could be such a good sticker, but sick it's brain so I disrespectful. I know. This is why we get those reviews. Like they're so disrespectful of the victims. And we're like, we're not trying to be, but there's, you know, we need to lighten exactly. shit up sometimes. And, and that that's was pretty why, funny. And <laughs> that's why in the ending, we're like, we're sorry. Yep. <laughs> we have a disclaimer. We're sorry. We are We're inappropriate. Sorry. We're totally I'm, inappropriate. I'm just saying out loud what I know at least one other person thought of. <laughs> I can't exactly. be the only one. <laughs> I no, be. I think you're not. But Jim found their daughter, Sarah, who was three and a half at this point, unharmed in her room, snuggled oh up in the corner of her bed. Oh, God. I know. He picked her up and they ran with her to the neighbor's house. The neighbor claimed she opened the door to Jim clutching Sarah in his arms and that Jim's face was drained of all color and he looked terrified. He couldn't speak, but he just kept making a guttural sound. So she asked if Kathy was injured or dead. And Jim replied, I think so. Her body is limp. So the neighbor quickly called the police and thought Jim was probably going into shock because he couldn't talk. Yeah. 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 While waiting for help, Jim kept quietly asking Sarah if she was okay. And every time she spoke, he would hug her, crying and kissing her. The neighbor heard Sarah say to him, I'm glad you came home early today, Daddy. Oh, I know. Oh, God. Baby. Baby. Oh, you can't handle things with kids. Luckily, she didn't get hurt. I know. Oh, my God. But she must have witnessed mm-hmm. something. Something. Exactly. The murder was so violent and in such a low crime area, a neighborhood of colonial homes with friendly neighbors, and the fact that Kathy was only 29 years old, so the story spread really quickly nationally. Oh, God, I bet. Adding to the horror of the murder was the fact that three-year-old Sarah was alone with her mother's dead body for 10 hours. 10 hours? 10 hours before her dad made it home. Wait a minute. How long was he gone that day? So let's see, he left at about 6.30, I think he said, and came home about 4.50. And he he came home early, according to the daughter. Oh my God, what does he work, like 12-hour days? Probably does, because he's an executive, so. Good God. I know. I thought the whole point of being an executive is that you don't have to work so hard. (laughs) Right? Shit. Guess I won't go there. Right, exactly. I'm going to start trying to stop trying to move ahead. Like, there's Mm -hmm. just no point then. (laughs) Yeah, just, yeah, (laughs) freeze it. I don't want to do that shit. Let's stay where we're at. (laughs) Interestingly, another incident took the lives of two people who had formerly lived at that same house at 33 Del Rio Drive. Oh, jeez. Anthony and Estelle Schifino had died in the home of carbon monoxide poisoning in 1977. The car had accidentally been left running in the garage leading to the poisoning. Isn't that crazy? Oh, it's just God. another little side tidbit I found. They are when I was never like, selling that house. <laughs> no, it's, never it's funny sold. because uh, when I was researching it, it's on like the list of houses. There's like a, a certain website and I have it, it cited somewhere. But yeah, it's it's a list of houses that murders happened in that are hard to sell. Yeah, I, I bet. I Yeah, murders and yeah. deaths. Yeah, I'd have to get one hell of a sale on that. Like, yeah, I'd have to get like a super discount. own a small business or make cool and unusual handcrafted items we love artists and small business owners and we would be stoked to help get the word out about yours consider advertising with us through this podcast it's super affordable and our podcast reaches every corner of the u.s even worldwide to find out more visit otfmpodcast.com and click on the advertise with us link let's get your creativity into the hands of people who would love it 
Jim told police he left for work at Kodak at 6.30 a.m. in the morning of Kathy's murder. Investigators first interviewed little Sarah at the neighbor's home where she and her dad had gone after Jim discovered Kathy. She said she woke up after her dad had left for work and saw a man with an axe in her parents' bedroom. When asked what color the man was, her reply was many colors. Um, it comes, they, they kind of explain it a little okay. later. And she said she couldn't see his eyes. When questioned a little further, she said the man she didn't know was sleeping in her parents' bed with an axe in his head. Police think that Sarah didn't realize the person in the bed was her mom because the scene was so horrible and grisly. Thank God. Oh my um, God and, it, but... and they did say, like, her mom's eyes were covered in blood. You know how oh Sarah said God. she couldn't see. So she did actually see eyes. She her did. mom or not. She saw somebody she saw in the bed mm-hmm. covered in blood. Oh, I know. The public speculated that Sarah could have possibly seen her mother's killer, but police think Sarah's confusion at the color of the person was because her mother's face was covered in blood. And so the many colors she saw. I see. Yeah. Sweet oh, little girl. I know. Oh, that's the most horrible part. Oh, my God. To the best they could determine, Jim was at work all day, and he had been in a meeting where there were several people who corroborated that he was there. Okay. They believe the slaying of Kathy happened sometime in the morning hours because she was in her bed wearing her night clothes. And a medical examiner later determined that Kathy had died between 2.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. And she was asleep when she died. God, okay. There was no evidence of sexual assault. The axe came from the family's garage, which had been left unlocked, so somebody could have had access to it. The window had been shattered from the outside, and the maul of the axe was assumed to have been used to break the window. Ah, okay. But, so they went in the garage, got the axe, and then went back outside? Um, I think the garage is separate from the house. Oh, okay. That yeah. makes sense. I, yeah. I get you. Okay. So the garage was unlocked. Someone went in there, got right, the axe, okay. and then broke into the house. I gotcha. I was picturing an attached garage. I'm like, couldn't you just <clears> I know. Garage? But you're that right. That took Not me a while. Garages. Right. Okay, cool. I'm with you now. But nobody in the neighborhood remembered hearing anything like glass breaking or dogs barking or anything like that. So police also found a sock that the killer may have used when holding the axe. I don't know okay. whether to protect their hands or to not get Cover fingerprints. Fingerprints yeah. or... Hmm. Okay. A damp bathroom rug was found hanging to dry in the garage, which was odd. So not <laughs> sure if, if that was something that had been cleaned before and it was just laid out to dry. It just happened to be, right. Okay. Or if this cl- this killer also does bathrooms. <laughs> like, whoa, I like, left a mess. <laughs> right? I mean, Let me clean that up. Huh. Okay. Uh, and strangely, valuables such as cash, jewelry, and watches in the bedroom near Kathy's body were untouched. So it wasn't a robbery. Yeah. The family's golden retriever named Amicus was shut up in the basement. (gasps) Oh. Yeah. So he didn't. Well, at least they didn't hurt the dog because you know how I feel about that. I know. That would have been really bad. But whether that person, you know, Goldens are so nice. Maybe someone came in and they were like, like, woohoo, someone hit me. (laughs) Yeah. And they were like, I'll put you in the basement. Right. Investigators began to suspect the burglary had been staged because, I mean, there was nothing, nothing actually. stolen. Yeah. Investigator Gary Printy said the scene was too neat. He noted that when burglars go into the house, they're in a hurry, and they definitely don't care about being neat and leaving a tea service neatly set onto the ground. Right, and they typically don't clean the bathroom rug. True. <laughs> Very <to> true. <laughs> so the day after Kathy's death, an officer called Jim's parents to tell them about Kathy. Good thing I remembered that detail because I didn't write it. They drove from Michigan and... Picked up Jim and Sarah, promptly taking them back to Michigan with them. Jim was supposed to go back to the police headquarters the following morning, but didn't since he was now in Michigan. Yeah, doesn't he need to be there for part of the investigation? I mean... You'd think. You'd think he'd stay around, but maybe, you know, you want to protect the baby too and get out of there. I know, but that's... But yeah, usually you want to help, so... The investigation quickly came to a standstill after Jim immediately hired an attorney named Michael Wolford. Police claimed Jim was uncooperative after this point, and his lawyer set conditions for interviews that police wouldn't agree to. So I'm not sure what those conditions were, but, huh. you know, okay. like maybe you have to come to us and I won't talk to you about anything having to do with Kathy. You know, something <laughs> really <laughs> outrageous. Good, yeah, helpful interview. Yeah. <laughs> right, so something. why even bother? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. 
Police soon discovered that Jim hadn't completed the final portions of his doctorate and that he had lied about this to both Lynchburg College at, and Kodak and that Kathy had become aware of the lie as well. Oh, so she didn't she know didn't until know. later. Oh, yeah. jikes. Man, yeah. yeah, I'd be pissed if I were her. I'd be like, what yeah. do you mean you didn't finish? I know. <laughs> we spent all this money, all this time. Right. Oh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be pretty livid. Oh, my God. Investigators spent years, and I mean years, decades working the case. There were no witnesses and Jim wouldn't allow Sarah to be interviewed further. There were innocent explanations for what looked like it could be incriminating evidence against Jim. Like Jim owned the axe that killed Kathy, but he also used it often to chop wood. So his prints would, would be on it. So that gotcha. doesn't necessarily and it mean. Was a, it was their, it was their axe. And However, it also seems the axe handle had been wiped clean as there were absolutely no prints on the handle. Or, you know, that person wore sock. a sock. Right. Yeah. Okay. Most everything else in the house, though, was also clean. No prints anywhere. Wow. This is, a, wow. This is a killer who comes in and does Cleans. the house. Doesn't want to be found. impressive. Yes. And does not want to leave evidence. Yeah. So this isn't like a, I don't know, this doesn't sound like an amateur or someone who right. hasn't. True. Hmm. Plus, co-workers at Kodak said Jim was at work all day. Hmm. Okay. In 1986, Jim remarried for a short nine months, but abruptly left. He told friends Whoa. that he had gotten married to provide Sarah with a mother. But Always a good reason <laughs> to get married, because I want my kid to have a mom. Yeah, I just want a random mom. But the wife later said uh, she thought Jim left her because she was becoming too close with the toddler. But, and, but the, uh, but, and she was shocked at his sudden departure. He never gave a reason. And she couldn't think of any other reason he'd leave because she was getting really close to Sarah. And then suddenly he's like, oh, I'm out. How odd. Yeah, just get a nanny. <laughs> just, oh, good point. He's probably, I mean. You know, there's there's people who do that as a job. It's true. Yeah, just get a nanny. You don't have to marry somebody. For an entire decade, Kathy's family in Michigan stood by Jim. They didn't believe he had anything to do with her murder. They were sure the police were just trying to pin it on him because they made mistakes in their initial investigation and they wanted a scapegoat. And by the early 90s, Jim had taken Sarah to Washington State, where his sister lived and where he got remarried. We're hopping all over the country here. We are. What year was this? This was, was like, early 90s now. Early 90s. So Sarah's like a... When was she, she born? She was three when that happened. And that was 1982. So she's, yeah, Matt. So she's, she's a bit older now. Yeah. Okay. She's a bit older. That's all we need to say. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we don't Excellent do that. Excellent researching. Yes. <laughs> she's a bit older. <laughs> Years have passed and Years people have got passed. older. People, people aged. While in Washington, Jim joined the international company Weyerhaeuser. I think that's how you say it. It's all German. Weyerhaeuser headquartered nice. outside of I Seattle. Think you Did you like got, it? Like spit on the. It was like a loogie. <laughs> <laughs> Weyerhaeuser. That's hot. He rose through the ranks and became vice president of marketing and sales for the company's softwoods division. As opposed wow. to the hardwoods division. As opposed to the hardwoods. <laughs> and all without a dissertation. <laughs> yes. Oh. Ho, ho. I guess you don't need one for softwoods. For softwoods? <laughs> Not really into softwoods. <laughs> just going to let that. Go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Flaccid woods. <laughs> you made me choke. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take a drink. Okay. So he would end up marrying twice more. Dang, he's on I don't, a roll. Yeah, he's he's a merry, merry, happy guy. Jim and his fourth wife, Sharon, were now living the life Kathy had dreamed up for herself and Sarah. Ouch, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. They bought a French country home in prestigious Gig Harbor near Tacoma, Washington, with views wow. of the eighth fairway of the country club. Dang, snooty. Jim held high-level industry positions, including serving on the steering committee for Harvard University's Joint Center for Housing Studies among other board positions like the Southern Forest Pine Association. <laughs> okay. He really is into wood. <laughs> I know. I thought it was so funny. Like, he's on a steering committee for Harvard, but then also prestigious ones like Southern Forest Pine Association. What? Yeah. Wait, so he gets to work on a, on a, at a thing for Harvard, but he still hasn't finished? Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anybody ever question it again like was Kodak the only one who ever questioned it and then it kind of got shuffled under the like he had right. built up enough experience and stuff to be able to just not 
they stopped looking Think into it. it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the happy couple, his fourth wife and him, were doing so well that they bought a second home in Scottsdale, Arizona. Dang. I know. They ended up moving there after Jim retired from Weyerhaeuser. So this is decades later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kathy's murder remained unsolved for almost four decades. So wow. 37 years. Until Brighton police joined forces with FBI's cold cases unit to re-examine oh. the evidence. Yes, so here's where we'll take another break, and when we come back, we'll talk about what was recently discovered. So Kelly, I really look forward to discussing true crime stories with you for our podcast each week. And you do such a great job of putting it together. Thanks. Well, I use Anchor, so it makes it so easy. I love the creation tools. They allow me to edit and record right from my phone or computer without all the expensive or confusing software. And it's free. Wow, all that and it's free? Yeah. Plus, they distribute our podcast for us. So we can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more. That's awesome. And we can make money from our podcast with no minimum listenership, right? Yep. Anchor is everything we need to create our podcast in one place. I think anyone who wants to have a great experience making a podcast with a good friend should download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM, which is A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started. For sure. Now let's get back to that murder story. So some we're back. We're back. We're back. That was fast. That was. It was almost like nothing even happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> oh, so some crazy ass details emerged from files that have been sealed for almost four decades. I'm quoting a newspaper there. No, I'm just kidding. Right. That's my <laughs> own writing. That's your own. Um, That's my own writing. Crazy ass details. Sealed files. So those documents. Why would the files be sealed? That's what makes you wonder if it's still an open case. Why were they sealed? Exactly. Hmm. They suggested. Get my letter opener. Get my. (laughs) (laughs) I'm unsealing this Uh, shit. Or uh, like you see in movies where they use the steamer to Mm -hmm. open it so that it doesn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Those documents suggest a man named Edward Larrabee was once a suspect in Kathy's case. And he had even confessed while in prison in 2014. At the time of the murder, Larrabee was on parole for at least three violent crimes against women, and he actually lived near Jim and Kathy's home. Pretty promising. Yeah. In the months and years after Kathy's murders, Larrabee was convicted of forcibly raping women. While in prison, he confessed to killing music teacher Stephanie Kipchinski in 1991. While on his deathbed, suffering from ALS, Larrabee made his confession to killing Kathy. However, he got key details terribly wrong oh and he also didn't she wasn't assaulted she wasn't sexually assaulted oh good point see that's Mm. you picked up on that that was a good good thing you picked up on he said it happened a year later than kathy's death and that the victim had short dark hair remember kathy had long blonde hair long blonde i was gonna say you could get the year wrong because you know like yeah like like the other day when i forgot that i was 40 yeah (laughs) five instead of 44 like you know you can you can (laughs) You know, you can get I mean, the year wrong. I mean, I, I get that if you commit a murder, I would assume that, you know, it's pretty. You would think that's stuck a pretty in your big... mind and you're, you're pretty good with the date. But, you know, yeah. I've, I've messed dates know. up before going, yeah. oh, really? That was 89 instead of 88? Yeah. But yeah, but short, dark hair to long blonde hair. That's yeah, a, that's, that's a, a huge biggie. detail. Yeah, <laughs> that's a biggie. And here's like you mentioned, he also said he had raped her and that she was awake and on her knees when he hit her with the axe. But neither detail was correct because she was oh my, asleep like far in bed. off, like <laughs> not way even a bad. little bit. <laughs> yeah, not even close. So he was ruled out as a suspect after those glaringly wrong details. Over the years, Kathy's family, who had once come to Jim's defense for a long time, began to believe he was the perpetrator. Annette Schloss, oh, Annette Schlosser, <laughs> Schlosser. Oof, I keep thinking of one. Goldschlager. Oh yeah. <laughs> Annette Schlosser. Schlosser. Annette Schlosser, Kathy's younger sister, wondered, quote, how could Jim do this to his own wife and then leave Sarah in the house all day? Who would want to believe that? Unquote. So that's why, I mean, they were like, no way. He's her dad. No way he would do that. Right. And leave her with the body all day. She now believes Jim snapped when his wife learned that he had lied to Kodak and to her about earning his doctorate and that he killed her before heading out to work that day. 
Annette said, quote, knowing my sister, she was all about education. And when she found out that Jim did not actually pass his verbal dissertation. So there you go. There you okay. go. He did not earn his PhD and he lied about it and was calling himself Dr. Krausneck. When she found out, I am certain she confronted him on it, unquote. So she was probably wow. pissed. But yeah. That's, that's, that's still that's, quite the overreaction. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. I wonder if, you know, he was under so much stress at work and right. stuff too because of that. This like he be. needed to take it out on somebody. Right. Interesting. Not needed to, but did. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. I said, yeah. We are not condoning his violence. No. Or any violence. At all. Police and the FBI began traveling to three different states to investigate Jim, including here in Colorado. Ooh. They conducted new rounds of interviews with Jim and others. They looked at physical evidence for new DNA testing since technology had advanced so much. Mm -hmm. The axe, while having been tested for fingerprints, hadn't been tested for DNA previously. Oh. Kathy's father, Robert Schlosser, I got it there. There, nice. Yeah. Who is now 90, still works the family farm in Michigan. Good Lord. I know. Well, that's probably why he's still alive. He's doing, you know, he's he's in good shape. Exactly. His wife, 88-year-old Teresa, is still there, too. And they've been waiting for 34 years for resolution. Actually, that oh, now God. it's 37 years. So they're older now. Oh, God. And they're still waiting to find out what happened to their daughter. Yes. The cold case team analyzed the data and final evidence acquired from the FBI lab in Quantico. And a grand jury returned an indictment against Jim on November 1st of 2019. Oh. Because of the evidence that was found. The DNA found in the test was that of the people who lived in the house, Kathy, Sarah, and Jim. No other DNA was found in the house. The lack of any other DNA can speak volumes. Wow. Yeah. Brighton's police chief, Dave Catholdi, said no other evidence at the scene to include DNA points to anyone other than James Krausnick Jr., Investigators said small sample DNA analysis, touch DNA analysis, and the digitizing of boxes upon boxes of evidence have been essential to the case. Celebrity forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Baden, whose work made headlines in the O.J. Simpson and Jeffrey Epstein's cases, also helped in the case. So that's kind of neat. Dr. Baden's analysis undermined Jim's alibi that he was at work during the crime. Jim's defense attorney, William Easton, dismisses Dr. Baden's analysis, saying they have a new expert, but they don't have new evidence. And that's an entirely different proposition. I know. This is the defense attorney. He also claims that Jim, who has pled not guilty to the charge of second degree murder, has cooperated throughout the years with investigators. But remember how, like, they put unreasonable yeah. conditions on his interviews. Yeah, totally. So I don't think he was really cooperating. So was there time? I mean, he had well, an alibi. Right. But the medical examiner had determined it could have happened between 2.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. <gasps> so it could have happened before. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. So he could have probably did it right before he went to work. And then he just went off to work like it was any other day. I think he washed the rug. Oh, my God. Probably bled on it or, or got was washing her blood off, washed the rug, right. hung it. Um, oh my God. Wiped off stuff, fingerprints, ransacked the place, and then went to work. And his daughter saw. And left his daughter. Something. She saw something. I think she woke up. I bet she was in bed, woke up yeah. to go find her mom. Right. Oh my God. And thought it was a man. And, oh, so creepy. Well, yeah. You know how your brain does things like that? Yeah. Like you, you can't comprehend the awful thing that you're seeing. Yeah. So she didn't recognize that it was her dad or I know oh my god oh but Jim's defense argued that it was Edward Larrabee that other guy who confessed to the killing that was the murderer currently Jim is out on bond oh is he yes I think it was only like a hundred thousand dollar bond but he's due back in court for a pretrial hearing coming up on February 23rd (gasps) oh this February 23rd this February 23rd So he's finally, hopefully, going to answer for this. Yeah. But the thing is, he's had this wonderful life all this, all these years, great career, all these wives. I wonder wonder how his daughter is about this. I wonder if she's going to testify or. She supports him right now. She is, I think, 41, (sighs) um, has her own kids. Right. Can't believe her dad would do such a thing. 
No, and then she has to live with the fact that she lived with him. Yeah. If he did. Yeah. Oh, my God. So I trying to comprehend that would be way, you know, so difficult. Right. So, and she never really got to know her mom, which sucks, you know. That's you, awful. You know. Oh, my God. That's a crazy story. Yeah. All right. Should I do my sources? Yep. Yeah, first, a PSA. Okay. Okay, Just PSA. finish college, damn it. I know. <laughs> all seriously. this could have been avoided. In high so, school. In high school. Finish it all. See what see what happens when you don't finish school? See what happens? Someone accuses you of it and you lose your shit. Yep. Not worth it, people. Not so, worth it. Not worth it. Although, then he lives through life really great and rich. You're killing my PSA, man. You're killing <laughs> Okay. Just finish college. That's all. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Genesis. All right. So <laughs> stay in school. <laughs> All right. Sources for this episode are 13wham.com, which makes me want to sing. <laughs> Wake, me Wake me up before you go. go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do this. Housecreep.com. That was the one I was telling Ooh. you about, like, that you can look up House different creep. houses that um, murders have been well, in and stuff. If I ever move now, I'm going to be, like, checking yeah. that before Check I buy out anything. Check housecreep.com. <laughs> no, yes. Right? NYTimes.com. Rochesterfirst.com. Democrat and Chronicle. TrueCrimeMama.com. <laughs> Crime Mama. <laughs> I love it. WHEC.com and People.com. I want to know one. what happens. Yeah, we'll update with a little short one, maybe when when the trial's over. Find out if he gets put right, in jail. Because be he's something that, like 70 sure. something now or 67, something like that. God, so. And he's gotten Crazy. away with it this long. Yeah. I mean, I assume it's him. It kind of seems right. like. Well, I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll see what the jury says. So you guys, this is something that we need help with because we don't have time to do shit. So. (laughs) Because this is all in our spare time. Yes. If you guys come up with um, fan art. Yeah. Things that we could use for stickers, ideas, send them to us and we'll send you something free. Whatever we put your design on, of course, give you give you credit. Yeah, for sure. ODFM podcast at gmail.com is where you yes. can send stuff. Yeah, send some things that go along with our stories. Um, use Jenna's face on something. No, 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 that's oh, not necessary. Oh, no, no, what? No, 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 wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> edit, edit. It's going to be a um, ton of Jenna's face on everything. <laughs> Take a picture of where you listen to our podcast. It can be a selfie or you could just be like, hey, when I'm sitting in this spot or whatever in the car just take a picture and post it and tag us yes we're curious to see where you listen to us we want to see where you listen and thank you for listening tell your friends and and family about us maybe not your family i don't know yeah (laughs) tell your friends (laughs) not any judgy family yeah right um but yeah yeah and share us and And stay uh, odd the world needs more the world needs more odd right now right i mean yeah bye bye To see images from this story, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at ODFM Podcast, or on our website at odfmpodcast.com, where you'll also find a link to our merch store, where you can get awesome stuff like t-shirts, mugs, stickers, and more. And if the weekly podcast just isn't enough to fill your ODFM cup full, join our fan club on Patreon for more content like minisodes, bloopers, and discounts at our merch store. That site is patreon.com slash ODFM podcast. And if you do love our bloopers and need more than we naturally do, which is a lot, buy us a glass of wine at buymeacoffee.com slash ODFM podcast. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM hosted by Kelly DeVries and Jenna Swanson. Production and editing by Kelly DeVries. Theme music by Eric Swanson. ODFM is a satirical true crime podcast for entertainment purposes only. The stories you hear are serious and true. The comments and opinions are not. We apologize if any of our content is harmful or disrespectful. 